if you wanted to do scripted TV, Giselle and Ashley, I mean, I'm sure that there are auditions for, you know, extra roles on Hush for season two. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Evan. And we have a very special holiday gift for all of you because right now it's that week between like Christmas and New Year's where you're just like, what is going on? Uh, so we have Candace to guide us through this deep space, literally from Potomac. And Evan, I think she's the perfect person to end our year with. Oh my God. We loved chatting with Candace. She filled us in on her uh, her acting career. She's on a Hush. show called, uh, yeah, Hush. Uh, but we're, we're not being hushed about it. It was really fun chatting about <laughs> that. She also, of course, dish on all the Potomac drama that's going down. Uh, Chris, all the allegations against him from Giselle and Ashley and how he feels about it. Um, <sighs> Mia and Jacqueline are apparently not or maybe not giving her threesome advice for <laughs> the role she's currently playing <laughs> on Hush. It, it got a little messy. It was definitely a lot of fun. And then also she uh, dropped that she is recording a Christmas album, which hello, the reason for the season. I need it so badly. And also she's been getting a lot of collabs on her song. So I, we, I, Mariah, Darlene Love, there's some Christmas legends that Candace I feel like could work with. And I would happily listen to all of them. Yeah, so have fun listening to our interview with Candy Girl. It was it was a lot of fun. It's your moment. And I mean, you personally, you have a lot to celebrate because you might not be able to say this, but I'm going to say it. I feel you're doing something a lot of Real Housewives have tried to do where you're getting like critical success in acting and music. And I just want to know, how does that feel? Oh my gosh. Um, I, you know what? I have been going, just running since the beginning of the year. Um, we we started filming Potomac. I was also filming Hush while filming Potomac. Do not recommend zero stars. I would never do it again. <laughs> that was It was a haze, it was so hard. Um, I was preparing for a tour. I went on tour. I went to BravoCon. I, like it was, there was too many things going on at once. Um, so I haven't really, processed that I'm doing all of this stuff and my family and my friends and you know in a lot of interviews it's kind of being shown to me like do you see what you've done so I think I'm going to decide that it's it's kind of a BFD it's kind of a big deal I'm okay with my accomplishments this year and I'm I'm just I'm really proud of my team and myself for you know not losing our edges or you know falling out in the street which is very possible when you're doing too much. <laughs> I mean, Candace, you are truly so beyond talented. And I love that you're having so much success in the acting space and the music space. But I, as a fan of you on Bravo, I am yes. concerned that you may transcend the Real Housewives platform. What are your thoughts on you possibly moving beyond reality TV, like, would you ever leave and just fully focus on this music and acting thing? I, so this is a conversation that we have a lot in my house. Um, so when I came onto this platform, my goal was to use this platform to get to where I am. Um, it's working. My evil plan is working. So, you know, <laughs> for as long as I am having fun on Housewives, which was tested very much in season seven, um, <laughs> I will be here. I, I love the, the, the fan base and the supporters that I have amassed on this platform. I am eternally grateful to Bravo for the support they have given me. They do not have to feature my music. They do not have to feature everything that I'm doing. And they are incredibly supportive of me. Um, and I like a few of my castmates on most days. So it's still, a, it's still worth it. And it's still a fun time. So I'm here until I'm not or until they fire me, whichever comes first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're still into it because I feel like if you weren't holding a champagne glass on Potomac, it would just be a major, major loss for the show, for, for the entire Housewives franchise, just across the board. That's really sweet. How did Chris feel about the sexy, spicy scenes? So, you know what is so funny? When I posted the trailer on my Instagram, I feel like I had like, 500,000 cousins who were like, oh, I'm telling your man, girl. 
it was hilarious. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh my God, does Chris know that this is happening? It's like, well, yes, I, it's it's just pretend I'm acting. Hundreds of actors simulate intimacy on TV and in film every day. It's okay. But um, Chris was very understanding. Like we've talked about before getting to this place um, because I've, I've, I've been acting for 15 years. So it was inevitable that I would get to a place where it would be time for me to, you know, portray a character who is intimate with a partner. And he, he definitely was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it, mm -hmm. but I love you and I support you. And we, we kind of left it there. <laughs> I, yes, that. I did job. ask him, I said, do you want to read the script? And he was like, no, I'm good. I, I just, I trust you and I'm good. I respect, I love that. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, that is so, that is so great. I am curious, you were talking about you were doing your research about threesomes. You were filming as the same, at the same time as Potomac. Did you talk to Mia and G and Jacqueline about threesomes <laughs> at all? Oh my <laughs> God. Evan, very shady of you. I learned um, that, uh, notes. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Uh, no, I did not. I, I, I didn't think about that. I actually could have mm -hmm. gone to the Gordons and, and or Jacqueline and Mia about this. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe for season two, as, as we're exploring these characters further, because God willing, there will be a season two. Hush was number one on Apple TV. I okay. So I don't see a world where we're not getting a season two, um, but AMC pretty please, you know, give us a season two. And then yes, I would happily um, explore real life experiences with the Gordons. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, I'll be watching from, I'm not going to get in it, but I'll be watching. Right. Yeah. From afar, from over there, from I, the campus, yes. I, I hope that means that, you, so do you and Jacqueline, like, do you start to talk to her a little bit more? Are you guys getting better? Because I know last episode, I mean, I did die at Mia's representative, but she seems like, a nice girl who's just kind of stuck behind Mia. Yeah. Do we get to get to see a little bit more of her? Did you get to meet a little bit more of her? You do get to, the audience gets okay. to learn more about her and um, much much like our characters on Hush, she's very layered. She's a very mm -hmm. layered woman and she she has more to offer than just being a representative <laughs> for, for Mia. So you, you do get to see some of that. Or, or maybe we could do some like couples counseling with, Ashley and Giselle, and they can figure out why they are coming for you and Chris on season seven of Potomac. Again, it's just, it's, you can't be happily married in this world. I think that's, that's the rule. If you're happily married, they're, they're going to come for you. They're going to attack and you just have to be ready with your marital armor, which we are. <laughs> Oh my God, totally. Well, I, I, I see Emmys in your future, but I think you really deserve an Emmy, Candice, for that moment where you're sitting on the floor of the dance studio, you look straight to camera, you break the fourth wall and you're, you're not having it. Like I got chills and I applaud you for just telling everybody what was up. Take me, take me through like your mental state in that moment and why you decided to not give into Neck Girls games. <laughs> um, <clears throat> It was, it was a, a, I didn't plan it. It just, it just kind of happened. Um, as I'm sitting there, when, when Giselle starts talking, I'm, I don't know what she's going to talk to me about. I'm, I have no idea. And as she starts to unravel this rehearsed Broadway show <laughs> that sold two tickets, um, I, I'm just in my mind, I'm like, what is, what is happening? Like, what's going on? Like, what are we doing? And I just, maybe it's the Sagittarius in me. I cannot fake it in any, in any, in any way. I can't fake it. So I, I just, I had to, I had to cut this, this, this is a scene. This is not a real moment and we're going to cut. I, cause I gotta go. If I sit here any longer, I'm going to eat my shoe and I can't, I, 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 I can't allow bad acting to happen on my watch. As the actress, yeah. You're like, you would, she would not get a call back. Yeah. Like if you, if you wanted to do scripted TV, Giselle and Ashley, I mean, I'm sure that there are auditions for, 
you know, extra roles on Hush for season two. But if you want to watch scripted TV, Hush premieres every Thursday on All Black TV. That's scripted television. Potomac Housewives on Bravo TV is supposed to be our real lives. So if you don't have a real life situation to offer, find a seat or the unemployment line. That's where you should go. <laughs> and I thought Chris was uh, a really surprising target because Chris is a man who I, you know, I don't know him. But from watching him, I would trust him with my life. I would trust him to keep me fed. I would trust that nothing shady would happen if we happen to be hanging out backstage at a reunion. Like, how is he doing today? Is he okay? He's better now. He was in not well, as Dorinda would say, not well, bitch. He was not <laughs> well for quite a while. Um, it was, it was a mind f for him um, to to have this picture painted of him because that's what Giselle did. She painted a picture of him that didn't belong to him. She created a narrative that was completely false and damaging um, and and hurtful. Um, and for as many people that did not believe it, and we were blown away at the number of you know messages and just comments um, of people that were calling BS and saying that they didn't believe it. But you know, there's always that 0.5% that says, oh, he did it or, you know, whatever they say. And, and then there are headlines that will live, you know, on the internet um, that insinuate that my husband is a predator. And that is, that's, you can't undo that. Um, and that's why it's so damaging for, um, for people to be able to make things up. It's it's hurtful, and that's he was very, yeah. Oh, and as anybody, like it's insane to have happened to you, and that's why I love seeing you and Dr. Wendy really getting like like so much closer because she went through sort not exactly this, but a similar situation with the similar people last year when it was coming for her husband. And I mean, last season, no offense to you, I was watching Dr. Wendy like this is I want this cup, I want this vamp. Like her family just seems so perfect and so great and uh it, it seems like she's been really helpful with you through all of this and have you guys been kind of in touch obviously while the episodes are airing but kind of like offering support like is she giving you yeah. tips like as someone who dealt with this last year yeah so we we talk pretty often um she'll call or I'll call or we'll text i i had not watched the episode where with the drink throw for, for quite some time I because I'd just been traveling a lot. And when I finally sat down to watch it, I was just, I was so in just awe of what I was watching. I called her immediately like, bitch, what? Like, what is this? Uh, so we, yeah, we've definitely been in conversation, just kind of marveling at how crazy everything has been. Does it make you, do you process the, the speaker of it all differently? Because as a viewer, I thought, okay, maybe she's extra triggered because she thought she was grouped in with those hoes after she had defended Chris. Like, does that recontextualize it for you at all? No, because okay. Robin's not an idiot. Um, okay, yeah. Anyone, I mean, the, the audience, when they saw the clip in context of Robin and the speaker, so many of them said, well, we knew you were who you were talking about. And it's like, if, if, if I thought for a second that my friend was talking about me, I'm going to go to my friend and say, um, okay. excuse me, bitch, you talking about me? Yeah. Okay, let's check in. I wanted to, I didn't think you were, but I wanted to make sure that's what a friend does. Um, and that's not what I, what I got from who I thought was my friend. Because I'm so. sure you could put some reasonably shady episodes on a speaker and get people a little upset too. At I could put some clips from the season on yeah. a speaker. You know, some moments where I'm not present and they're talking to their leaders and you 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 would know that we're friends the way that they're talking to them. Well, so, yeah, you know, it, it goes both ways. And I'm, I... I always own what I say, 
always.